When you have properly trained your employees in lockout, tagout, and tryout, you've defined for them what the appropriate lockout, tagout devices are, and you've demonstrated the proper written procedures for lockout, tagout, tryout. But what do you do if a lockout, tagout is in effect and you approach a work shift change for authorized and affected employees? In part two, control of hazardous energy, lockout, tagout, and tryout for the ready mixed concrete industry, the National Ready Mixed Concrete Association has developed best management practices for navigating a work shift change during lockout, tagout. And while we're at it, let's also take a look at new equipment purchases and what to do when contractor lockout, tagout, and tryout is to take place at a ready mixed concrete plant. As I said in the room, this is where we left off. We've been checking and cleaning the rollers, adjusting them and living them as necessary. From this point, you'll need to go up the belt. What if the lockout, tagout, and tryout procedure and job have not been completed and it's time for plant workers to go home at the end of their shift? As a best management practice, you want to follow these steps to ensure a smooth transition. Outgoing authorized employees need to have a face-to-face -face meeting with incoming authorized employees. Today, Cruz and I have been working on the tunnel belt rollers, greasing and cleaning. Uh, we'll show you where we left off, then we'll come back. In. Go to the equipment maintenance or work site or sites and review what work procedures are taking place. Is this an equipment installation? replacement, or maintenance taking place. Outline what work has been completed and every step of what work remains to be done. Next, identify what sources of energy such as electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, and others are the sources of energy for the equipment. 